Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker popped wheat. It's neat. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin'. The Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. Remember, too, the ones shot from guns give you added food values of restored natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the nourishing treat you love to eat. And if you want to be like Sergeant Preston, strong enough to grapple with outlaws... Fortify yourself every morning with a good breakfast that includes a heaping bowl of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Start tomorrow, sure. Twelve-year-old Jackie Sand, the son of a mine owner, was traveling to Dawson with Paul Gabriel, one of his father's hired men. Late afternoon found the man and boy on the rim of a canyon that bordered Jackknife River. It was here that they sighted another traveler coming toward them. As he approached, the stranger shouted a greeting. Hi there! Hi! Oh! Whoops! Oh! Hey! Did you spare any matches? I dropped mine a ways back. Well, Duke! Scar! What are you doing around here? I'm on my way to look for a job. What about you? Well, I... I... Oh, I say, the, uh, the one to talk in front of the kid, huh? He your son, Scar? No, no, no. He's just... Paul, a... why does this man call you Scar? Oh. Say, what is this, Scar? Jackie, Duke and I have some things we'd like to talk about. You stay here in the sled. Come on, Duke. Yeah, sure thing, uh, Paul. There was a hint of sarcastic emphasis in Duke Ramsey's voice as he followed Scar Gabriel to one side of the trail. Scar looked back at Jackie, who was watching wide-eyed. As if determined to put as much distance as possible between himself and the boy, the big man led the way into the brush and thick evergreen trees that bordered the trail. Satisfied that he and Duke were well away from Jackie, Scar said, Doggone your hide, Duke. I could skin you for calling me Scar in front of the kid. The law's looking for me. About ten months ago, I held up a bank in Centerville. I've been dodging the Mounties ever since. How come you didn't head for the border? Oh, that's just what the United States authorities would like me to do. You were wanted in Alaska as well as the Yukon? Yeah. And you've been mighty busy since the last time I saw you. Must have uh, plenty of cash hidden away, Scar. <laughs> that's the joke of it, Duke. I found out that the money I took from the bank was a new issue that could be traced. Hmm. That's tough. Mighty tough. So until I get back to the States or to Mexico, the cash is no good to me. Where does the kid fit into the picture? I work for his father. You what? Well, I had to hide out someplace, so I headed for Ball Rock Mountain. Mounties don't get up that way on patrol more than once a year or so. Yeah? The kid's father has a mine up there. Wanted someone to help him. I needed a place to bunk and a chance to eat regular. So I took the job. Figuring to stay there for a year till the hunt for me was cold. Oh, Sally, where are you going now? Jackie's mother went to visit the States a couple of months ago. She's due back in Dawson now. My boss, Pete Sand, broke his leg about a week ago, so he couldn't meet her. Kid and I are supposed to bring her back. Well, it'll be safe for you to be seen in Dawson? And I thought maybe I'd hole up in a shack outside of town while the kid goes on alone to meet his ma. Good job. Hey, what was that? It's the kid. He heard us talking. Well, I'll get him. You stay away from me. You, you walk off? He knows the truth, Scar. Stand still, Jackie. As Jackie backed away from the two men, he didn't realize how close he was to the edge of the cliff. Each time Scar took a step toward him, Jackie stepped back a pace. I'll deal with you, you little snooper. You 
wait till my dad hears that you're a crook. Jackie was less than half a pace from the cliff edge. Come here, you... The scar made a sudden grab for him. The boy stepped back, uh. then disappeared from view. Ah! Duke, he fell. Scar Gabriel and Duke Ramsey stared wide-eyed at the edge of the cliff over which Jackie Sand had fallen. I don't see him on the rocks below. He must have missed the rocks. Well, if he did, he fell in the river. He did. There he is. Hmm? Two men standing on the canyon rim watching Jackie's struggles to stay above water didn't know that a narrow trail ran along the base of the canyon at the river's edge. An overhang concealed Sergeant Preston and his team of huskies from their view. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Help! Help! Almost as soon as Jackie hit the water, the sergeant shouted, After him, boy! Come on, King! Get him! <laughs> An instant later, the mighty dog was in the water, swimming toward the helpless boy. He moved ahead steadily, and as he did so, the two men watching from above saw him. Scar, that dog's going after the kid. The kid lives, he'll tell the law what he knows. Take it easy, the current carrying him downstream. Just a few feet from those rocks. The hit family's done for. Getting closer to him. He's hit him. Jackie's going down. Look, that dog's diving for him. The dog's got him. Yeah, but he can't keep the boy's head above water. Oh, well, <laughs> one of my worries are over. Someone's I mean... swimming out to help the dog. Hey, Duke, he's wearing a uniform. It's a Mountie. Get back so he can't see you. Come back here near the sled. He's not looking up here. When the sergeant reached the dog's side, he grabbed Jackie and held the unconscious boy's head above water. As he looked up to the canyon rim, he saw one man duck back out of view. Duke, did he see you? I don't know. I think he looked up. We better get out of here while the getting's good. Was the kid dead? He looked to be dead. Good. I'll throw my gear on your sled. You weren't traveling my way. I am now. Line up your dog. Up, boy. Up! <laughs> Mush, you man of you! Mush! Mush! Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had reached shore with his unconscious burden. He had thrown aside his parka and gun belt before going into the water to rescue Jackie. When he reached dry ground, his uniform was soaked. He was glad he carried a complete change of clothing on his sled. After artificial respiration had restored Jackie's breathing to normal, Preston examined the head bruise. Then he carried the boy to a nearby cave that had apparently served many travelers as a shelter. Inside the entrance, the Mountie built a fire, then removed Jackie's wet clothing and wrapped the boy in blankets. Then he changed his own clothes. After putting on dry clothing from his pack, he placed the wet clothes near the fire to dry. Jackie's eyelids fluttered. Oh. Yes, King, he's regaining consciousness. Oh. Take it easy, son. Who... Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. <laughs> this is King, my dog. Uh, I I want to sit up. I'll help you. How do you feel? My my head hurts. You stuck your head on the rocks while you were in the water. Water? Yes, King and I pulled you out of the river. Remember? No, I don't remember. Sergeant Preston looked closely at the boy he and King had rescued. Jackie's expression was bewildered. His eyes blank as he returned the Mountie's scrutiny. Well, suppose you tell me your name and where you live. My name? That's right. Who are you? Gosh, I... I don't know. You don't know your name? I, I can't remember. I can't remember anything. Well, don't worry about it, son. Just rest a little while. But but I must have a name. Everyone does. I'll look through your clothes. There may be something in your pockets to identify you. All right, Sergeant Preston. Perhaps you'll be more comfortable if you lie back. Yeah, I am sort of tired. I I think I'll close my eyes for a little while, if you don't mind. Go right ahead, son. As Jackie closed his eyes, Sergeant Preston reached over and held the boy's wrist lightly. Pulse is steady, normal. A <laughs> bump on the head while he was in the water might have caused amnesia. Well, King, we'll see what's in his pockets. Here's a handkerchief. A couple of marbles. There's a knife with a name engraved on it. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie what? Nothing else in his pockets. I see if there are any labels on his clothing. The label in Jackie's coat bore the name of a Seattle outfitting company. And that was the last clue the sergeant could find. When he wakened, Jackie was still unable to give Sergeant Preston any information about himself. Since the Mountie was the only one he knew in a strange and bewildering world where the past had ceased to exist, Jackie felt secure only as long as Preston or King was at his side. Sergeant Preston felt the clothing which had been spread out near the fire to dry. Everything was dry with the exception of the boy's heavy coat. When Jackie had dressed, Sergeant Preston gave him a parka. Over this, he wrapped blankets. 
golly, I sure am bundled up. No, I'll carry you out to the sled. I fixed a comfortable place for you. Hmm. How's that? Ah, oh, great. Am I going to ride in the sled? That's right. Where are we going? We're going to a trail that will take us to the top of the canyon. All set, King? <laughs> Out front, boy. <laughs> All right, on King! On, you hussy! <laughs> on the canyon rim, the hard-packed snow made the tracks difficult to read. After studying them for some time, Sergeant Preston turned to King. King will follow the man who is standing here and try to learn who Jack he is and why the man deserted him. At the scent, boy. Understand? <laughs> It was a simple matter for the great dog to pick up the scent of the dog team that belonged to Jackie's father. King moved in the direction taken by the dogs, and then looked back over his shoulder, waiting for his master to follow. All right, King. On King! On you, Husky! We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, when you travel with Sergeant Preston, you never can tell who you're going to meet up with. Like the time when we stopped at the trading post on the trail from Whitehorse to Dawson. In came an old weather-beaten Indian trapper known as Trapper Joe. He had come all the way from... How? Oh. Well, hello there, Trapper Joe. Some pile of furs you've got there. Looks like you can do some big trading. Me need plenty supplies. Get plenty hungry. Well, whenever I hear anybody say that, I always tell them to stock up on swell-tasting Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice. They good eat? I say you've never tasted anything so delicious. They're the breakfast cereals shot from guns to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. There's bang-up nut-like flavor in every mouthful. Mm. You make my hungry get heap bigger. Well, just wait till you taste those choice premium kernels that are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. No one to wait for sun up. Me eat some now. A good idea, Trapper Joe. In fact, delicious Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice is ready to serve. All we do is top it with milk or cream and fruit. And as all you fellas and girls know, you can always have second and third helpings. Because Quaker popped wheat and rice are so good for you. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Don't miss out a single morning. For a heap big treat, eat Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston had lost a great deal of time after pulling Jackie out of the river. The long hours he spent caring for the boy had enabled Scar Gabriel and Duke Ramsey to get a good lead. When darkness fell, they stopped at a deserted way cabin two miles from Dawson. From the provisions he carried on the sled, Scar prepared a meal. The two men had nearly finished it when the outlaw said, Now, when you reach Dawson, Duke, you better report to the police. What about you? I'd be arrested on sight if I went to headquarters. I'm going to try to sneak into Dawson at night. If I can get to the docks and board a ship for the States, I'll get out of this country. You'll have to find out for me when the next boat's leaving so that I can make my plans. I'll get the sailing schedule for you, but why should I report to the police? You were the one the Mountie saw standing on the rim of the canyon. Unless you report the accident, the law is likely to think that Jackie was thrown into the river. What do I say? Say that the sled he was riding in overturned. That the kid and the man with him both went over the edge. That'll take care of the man named Paul. What about Jackie's mother? She'll be waiting in Dawson for someone to meet her. After you've seen the police, look for Mrs. Sand. Tell her the same story you tell the police. And don't forget to find out about boats leaving Dawson. Well, uh, what'll I use for money? Money. You heard me. I'm broke. Uh, all right. I have some cash in my money belt here. Here. Here's ten dollars. This isn't any of that new issue you stole from the bank, is it? It's cash I earned working at the mine. Then hand over some more of it. I don't do favors for nothing, Scar. You want to be paid That's for... right. I want to be paid. What's more, I want to be a full partner. 
with half of the cash from the bank hold up. Why, you dirty little... It's robbery. That's how you got it. <laughs> Don't use arguing, Scar. You'll need my help to get out of the Yukon, and you know it. All right. I'll pay. You're showing sense. Where's the cash? In my money belt. You don't get it till you're taking care of things for me in town. We'll divvy it when I get back from town tomorrow, then. I don't see what good the cash will do you. The law will be after you as soon as you spend it. Who said anything about spending it in the Yukon? I'll fix things so we'll both be aboard a steamer for the States. While Scar remained in hiding in the shack outside of town, Duke Ramsey took the sled and dog team and went into Dawson the next morning. He reported an accident to the police, then went to the docks. He got the information Scar wanted and learned that the boat from the States had already arrived. He found that Jackie's mother was at the Prince Albert Hotel. In response to his message, she came to the lobby to see him. Your message sounded urgent, Mr. Ramsey. I have bad news for you, Miss Sam. What? Your husband couldn't come to meet you. He broke his leg about a week ago, so he had to stay at the mine. Oh, how dreadful. How did it happen? I don't know that, but I do know your son Jackie and a, a hired man named Paul were supposed to be here in his place. I met them on the trail to Dawson. We had a meal together, and uh, they told me about themselves. Where is my son? Well, there was an accident. What, what kind of an accident? Now, their sled was ahead of mine on the trail. <laughs> Their dogs were traveling fast, too fast. They overturned on a sharp curve above Jackknife River. Oh. I saw them go over the edge. Sled, dogs, everything was lost. But my son, my baby. He was riding on the sled. Paul tried to oh. save him, but he couldn't. They're both dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've already reported the accident to the police, so there's not much more I can do. I'll get along. Duke left the hotel. He went to the nearest cafe and gave his order to the bartender. Having seen the police and Mrs. Sand, he planned to relax over a good meal before returning to Scar. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had arrived in town with Jackie. He had unsuccessfully questioned a number of people in town in an effort to learn something about Jackie. When no one recognized the lad, Preston decided to take him to see Dr. Quince, who lived at the Prince Albert Hotel. As they entered the lobby, Jackie's mother ran toward them. Jackie! You're not dead. Huh? That man lied. You're not dead. Oh, son. <laughs> Jackie, what's wrong? Well, I don't... Uh, you act as if you don't know me. I beg your pardon. Yes? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Do you know this boy? Know him? Well, Sergeant Preston, he's my son. I, I don't understand all this. First, Mr. Ramsey says Jackie's dead. Now I know my boy's alive... But he doesn't know me. My son doesn't know me. Sergeant Preston explained how he and King had rescued Jackie from Jackknife River. He told how the boy had struck his head. And the blow affected his memory, Mrs. Sand. Jackie's suffering from amnesia. Can he be cured? Only a medical man can say. However, I've known several cases where the condition is only temporary. There's a good doctor here in the hotel. I suggest you talk to him. I'll do that right away, Sergeant Preston. Perhaps you can help me find the man who said Jackie was dead. How? When did you see him? Well, 15 or 20 minutes ago. He said he'd reported the accident to the police. He lied if he said the sled and Paul went over the edge into the river. When I pulled Jackie out of the water, I saw no sign of a sled or dog team. I wonder why he lied. That's what I want to find out. Will you describe this, Ramsey? Well... He was short and, and rather slender. He had... There he is, Sergeant Preston. Look out the window. See that man coming from the cafe? He's Ramsey? Oh, yes. Yes, he's the man. I'm going to follow him. Sergeant Preston, wait for me. No, Jackie. You stay with Mother. But I want to go with Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston, wait. As Preston looked back over his shoulder, the expression on Jackie's face spoke volumes. The Mountie realized that he and King were the only two living creatures Jackie trusted. He knew that without a memory, just telling the boy Mrs. Sand was his mother was not enough. Jackie was panic-stricken at the thought of being left with a stranger. I'll leave King with you, Jackie. How will that be? Well, all right, Sergeant. Hey, King. <coughs> Stay with Jackie, boy. Understand? <coughs> Good boy. See you later, Jackie. You think a lot of Sergeant Preston, don't you, son? I sure do. He and King are the best friends I have. Well, perhaps King will come with us to the doctor's office. 
Oh, how will that be done? Word of Sergeant Preston's arrival in town with a young amnesia victim rescued from Jackknife River quickly spread through Dawson. Duke Ramsey had heard about it in the cafe, and that was why he had left so hurriedly, determined to report at once to Scar. Scar was angry when he heard the news. All the luck. The kid alive to tell what he knows. But Scar, he can't tell anything. He doesn't even know who he is. He does He has amnesia. He's lost his memory. You don't have a thing to worry about. Yeah, what about the man who followed you here? Huh? When I opened the door for you, I saw a man coming along the trail behind you. Wait. You're Reggie Scar. Probably a sour. It's a Mountie I saw his red coat beneath his parka. A Mountie? Following me? Look out the window. You let him here, Duke. I'm going to shoot him when he comes through the door, and I'll kill you two for bringing him no, here. No, Scar. Put that gun away. We'll talk to the Mountie. Tell him the truth. Yeah, tell him I'm wanted by the oh, law. Oh, huh? no, we'll say Jackie fell over the cliff. That's no good. The scar on my face is a dead giveaway. The Mountie will know who I am soon as he sees me. There must be some way out of this. Yeah, this... Wait a minute. Maybe there is. Now, listen. You're the one he saw on the canyon rim. So you're the one he'll want to see. Stick to the story or report it to the police and you might be all right. What about you? I'll go in the next room. It'd be up to you to get rid of the lawman. But I don't have a gun. I do. Remember that. See that the Mountie doesn't come near me. Because if he does, I'll start shooting. Your name Ramsey? That's right. Duke Ramsey. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I want to ask you some questions. Questions about what? About an accident you reported to the police. I told the police all I knew. As Sergeant Preston glanced around the cabin, he saw two parkas hanging on pegs on the far wall. He knew one of the parkas belonged to Ramsey. The other had been made for a much bigger man. Whose parka is that? What? Oh, both of those parkas are mine. Oh? Let's see how the larger one fits you. Uh -huh. Put it on. Well, I... Who's your partner? I don't have a partner. You're I... lying. Where is he? Right here, Preston. Cover and fold it. Oh, Scar Gabriel. Yeah, you see my picture on handbills. That's hmm. right. You're wanted for robbery. I didn't know you were involved in this. Don't try reaching for your gun, Preston. Put your hands up. I didn't tell him anything about you, Scott. Shut up. Ramsey was lying when he said a man on a sled went into the river. Yeah, he was lying. I was the one who was traveling with Jackie. Then you're the hired man named Paul. Right. Scott, it wasn't my fault he learned the truth. I tried to cover for you. He didn't try hard enough. Now get over there by the Mountie so that I can keep this gun on both of you. Don't shoot me, Scar. I didn't tell him you were here. He saw your parka. That's how he knew. Give me a chance, Scar. I'm your partner. I wouldn't double-cross you. As Duke pleaded the Scar gave you to spare his life, Jackie here. and King were nearing the cabin. The boy had grown restless and slipped away while his mother conferred with the doctor in town. He had left the hotel with King. Oh, the dog together, had picked Scar. up his master's scent and followed him. <laughs> kill the Mountie, Scar. Then we'll get out of here. We'll leave together. I'll help you. Don't come I... any closer, Duke. Don't kill me, Scar. Please don't kill me. Get back! In a frenzy of fear, Duke threw himself toward the outlaw. Preston reached for his gun as Scar fired. <laughs> I'm hit. He shot me. Preston's bullets masked Scar's weapon, but Duke had already been hit. He staggered back as Jackie opened the cabin door. King charged into the cabin, while Jackie, bewildered by the excitement, stood for a moment in the doorway. The wide-eyed and frightened boy stared at Sergeant Preston, scarcely aware of the wounded man staggering toward him. Don't finish, Scar. I'm hurt. He shot me. I'll die. Duke reached blindly to steady himself. Hey, look out! He grabbed Jackie's shoulder and collapsed. The man and the boy went down together. As he fell, Jackie struck his head on the door jamb. Steady, King. On guard, boy. Put out your hands, guy. You'll wear these handcuffs to jail. My shoulder. Sergeant, that dirty double-crosser shot me. He'd have killed me if it hadn't been for you. You're not in the clear yourself, Duke. Stand up and I'll do what I can for your wound. Maybe I'll die. King, guard the prisoner. Guy, don't make a move. What kind of a move could I make wearing handcuffs? Jackie, are you all right? My, my head. I must have bumped it. What, Paul? You, you're handcuffed. His name isn't Paul, Jackie. He's Scar Gabriel, and he's under arrest. Then you know he's a crook. Did you know that? Sure. We are. We were on our way to Dawson to meet Mom when we saw this man on the trail. He called Paul Scar, and I heard them talking. Scar said he was wanted for a robbery in Centerville, and he's wanted in Alaska. Then I fell over the cliff trying to get away from them. I didn't do anything to Jackie, Sergeant. Oh, my shoulder, you're hurting it. Only a flesh wound. I bandaged it. Now we'll go to Dawson. I'll testify at Scar's trial, Sergeant. I'll tell how he tried to kill you. You're a double crosser. While you're at it, tell the law how you tried to blackmail me for a share of the Centerville loot. You got the loot in your money belt. I don't have any. We would have divvy it up when you got back from town. So the loot's in your money belt, eh, Sky? You'll find it when you search him, Sergeant. Yes, 
Ask Will Plenty to pay you back for this bullet wound. You'll have your day in court, Duke, and so will Skye. But the law doesn't want me. The false report of Jackie's accident you turned into headquarters will be used against you at your trial. Sergeant Preston, what about me? Jackie, I don't know how you and King happened to come here, but you're going back to Dawson. After the prisoners are in jail, we'll find your mother. Oh, golly, wait till I tell her what's happened. She'll be mighty glad to hear about it. Will you see her, too? Well, yes, of course, son. I want to tell her that this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's how you mothers can make a breakfast a tempting meal that no one in the family wants to skip. Just pour out bowlfuls of delicious, crisp Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top them with milk or cream and sliced bananas or other fruit. And man, oh man, what a treat. Remember, Quaker makes the one shot from gun. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are crisp, tender, full of tempting nut-like flavor because only the choice premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size. And say, as you mothers know... Some of your family like their cereal not so sweet. Some like it ever so sweet. And that's the beauty of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. You get the sun-ripened natural flavor that old Mother Nature put into the good natural grain. No factory sweetening is added. So your family can sweeten it with sugar just the way they like it. Then consider the nourishment in every bowl your family eats. Extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1... Niacin and iron. At your store tomorrow, look for the big red and blue Quaker packages with a sealed inner lining that keeps delicious Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice as crisp as can be. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, two men are heading this way from the Arctic Ocean. They stole a ship's food supply and left their shipmates to die. They sound like a treacherous pair, sir. That's a mild word for them, Sergeant. Already they've injured two Indians that tried to assist them. Where are they now, sir? According to last report, Sergeant, they're heading south towards the border. Joel Roach's cabin is in their line of flight. They may murder him and his wife unless you get there to stop them. I'll leave at once, Inspector. Come on, King. Oh! <laughs> Sergeant Preston sets out for a spot near the Arctic Circle to face danger and the threat of death from two cruel killers. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Only Quaker Paco 10 has wheat and rice shot from gun. That's Quaker Paco 10, a regular cereal pantry. Six different delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Ten crisp, fresh individual servings. At breakfast, you can take your pick of the pack. Have your own separate individual package. Enjoy a different cereal, extra fresh, every morning. Just remember, only Quaker Paco 10 has all your family's cereal favorites. Try Quaker Paco 10. You'll be glad you did. Listen tomorrow at this same time to the Green Hornet, brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again, delicious Orange Crush. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mutual.